Hey guys, it's the Riker Dane. I'm going to show you how to change the rear brakes and rotors on this 1996 Ford Mustang GT. Now this brake job is going to be the same for a 1994 to 1998 Mustang and is going to be very similar for a 99 to 2004. So keep watching because the rear brake calipers are a lot different than the front brake calipers. So like I said, the rear brake calipers are different than the front as you can see. So you need to watch the whole video for the solution on this do-it-yourself project. So to get started we're going to need a floor jack and some jack stands. And we'll need some brake pads, some brake parts cleaner, and some brake grease. But these wherever pads come with their own grease so you don't need to buy extra. And then we'll need a rear rotor. So we're going to position the jack under the vehicle and we'll take our flathead screwdriver and pop that center cap so we can get those lug nuts off. And you can take a four-way or you can take a uh, air, air wrench and you can break loose those lug nuts. And all we want to do is just break them free and then we'll take the jack and jack up the vehicle. So that way the tire is just off the ground by about two or three inches. And as soon as we get that jacked up, then we'll take the four-way and just remove all the lug nuts completely, and then we can take the whole wheel off the car. So here is the rear brake caliper, and what we're going to need to do is take this top bolt off and this bottom bolt off right here. And all you need to take this top bolt off is just going to be a regular socket wrench. And the socket wrench won't fit on the bottom, so you're going to need to use an open end wrench and just use the closed side of it, or the open side, whatever side you want to use, and take out that bottom bolt. And then we'll just jiggle the caliper back and forth, back and forth, until it finally comes out. And then we'll be able to see our brake pads. And these brake pads are in here pretty snug, so it'll take a little bit of effort to pull them out. And they're looking pretty thin, so they definitely need to be replaced. So we'll see what the other side looks like. And they're pretty thin as well. And they've got these little clips on the side to make them fit nice and tight in there. So I'm going to take some brake cleaner to clean all this off because I'm just going to keep getting dirtier and dirtier. Just take the brake cleaner and spray it all over the place until you get some of that brake dust off. And so now we need to take the brake caliper off. And there's a top bolt right here. And there'll be a bottom bolt down to the bottom. And you'll be able to use a socket wrench because you'll have easy access to these bolts. So we'll just take that socket wrench and break those bolts free and they're not too bad to uh, break free. Just take those bolts out. They're a short little two inch bolt so that's what they look like when you pull them out. So we'll take the top one out, we'll take the bottom one out and then this caliper bracket will just come right off and we can clean that up before we put it back on. And then if you just grab the rotor with both hands and pull it straight off, it'll slide right off. And here's the old rotor. It's not too bad, but we're going to replace it with a brand new one. And you can make sure that you have the right one. Just check it on the, both the front and the back. And then we need to prep our new brake pads. So what you're going to want to do is take that brake grease, just to prevent some squeaking and squealing. You want to put that where the caliper is going to touch the brake pads. There's also a couple clips that come with these brake pads. So, like I said, the rear brake calipers are different than the front, and you're going to need a special tool for this. You can rent this from any local auto parts store. But basically, the rear caliper piston does not push directly straight in. You have to twist it or spin it in. So that's what this tool does. So if we take a look at this caliper here, you can see there's two slots on the side of this piston and that's where you're going to put that tool. You're going to take the two pegs of the tool and put it in those slots and then we're going to twist it in. So you want to get this tool adjusted right. You're going to stick it in to the caliper and then just position those pegs right into the slots and then you need to tighten it up. And once you have everything tight then you'll just take the handle and spin that piston in and as you do that you need to kind of adjust and, and tighten it back up again. 
This is a way slower process than the front calipers, but it's a lot faster than some of the repair manuals say to use a, uh, a needle nose pliers. And so this will definitely work a lot better and you won't be as aggravated trying to get this piston to spin in. But as you can see, it will eventually go in and you'll be able to get that brake caliper around those new brakes. So stay with it and after a couple minutes you'll get that piston back in. Before we put the new rotor on we want to spray it down with some brake cleaner to make sure we get any lubrication off that comes in the packaging. Okay so we'll take that brand new brake rotor and slide it straight on and then we'll take the brake caliper bracket and we'll put that on and there's a top and bottom bolt those two inch bolts so make sure you use the right ones and then just take that socket wrench and tighten up the top and the bottom. Now time to put the new brake pads on and we're going to put these little clips on the side of the brake pad to make sure they have a snug fit. You may need to use a needle nose pliers to make sure this little clip is on there correctly. And this is uh, a little bit tough to get these brake pads in because they're really snug and you got to line them up just, just perfect to be able to slide them in but it's going to take a little bit of force, a little bit of power to push them in there. I'm not sure why they make them so tight, but uh, you want to get them in there and make sure they're in there correctly. And so we've got the outside on, and now we want to put the inside on. So as soon as you get the outside and the inside on, you'll notice these little kind of tensioner springs, and that's it, to just press against the caliper itself. And as soon as you put that on here, I'll show you that as it kind of gives it a little tension, it kind of springs back and forth. And then just take your top bolt and put that in, and take your bottom bolt and put that one in. And then get your socket wrench and snug them up. And remember, you'll have to use an open end wrench to do the bottom bolt. And as long as you've got your wheel off, this is the best time to clean them up. Okay, so we're almost there. All we're going to do is take that wheel and slide it on and take those lug nuts and put them back on to the studs. And then take that four-way or that air wrench and tighten them up. And then once you lower the car, we're going to take a torque wrench and we're going to set it to 100 foot-pounds. So when we use this, we're going to go in a star pattern. So we're going to use that wrench until it clicks and go in a star pattern all the way around. Make sure we go around twice to check each bolt and click it 100 pounds. And then as soon as you're done with that, we'll just take that center cap and press it on. And you are done. I hope this video on how to change your rear brake pads and rotors helped you out. If you like this video, then make sure you check out my channel because I have a lot of other awesome videos. I also have a great playlist for more Mustang fixes too. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.